This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this lesson, I'm working with the Lauren Extreme close-up photo, which you can find in the Working Files folder. Here, I'd like to whiten her teeth. Now, there's several ways to do this, and I'm going to show you a couple quick ways. The first thing I want to do is make a copy of the original layer. Some of the things I'm going to show you directly edit the pixels of this layer, others don't, so it's always a good idea to make a copy of your initial layer. First, I'm just going to double click on the background layer. I'm going to rename it Original. Then I'm going to copy that layer by dragging the entire layer to the New Layer button. This gives me a copy of the original. I'm going to rename this copy for the tool I'm going to use. I'm going to call it Dodge. The Dodge tool is used to lighten specific areas of an image. You can find it at the absolute bottom of your tools panel. Sponge, Dodge tool, and Burn. The sponge is used to saturate or desaturate areas of an image. Dodge is used to lighten areas of an image. And the Burn tool is used to darken areas of an image. Burn and Dodge are based on traditional photographic tools. And all I've got to do is set the size of the brush, because it is a brush. I can set the range, whether it's going to affect midtones, shadows, or highlights. In this case, I'll stick with midtones. And the exposure is effectively the strength of the tool. And all I'm going to do is basically just drag it over her teeth. And you can see as it does, it's whitening, it's lightening these areas. Now, one of the strengths of the tool is that it is a brush. I'm going to zoom in, view actual pixels. This will let me zoom in really, really close on the image so that I can see exactly what it's doing. Actual pixels shows you the image at its 100% zoom size. I can adjust the brush size using the bracket keys, the left and right bracket keys. The left bracket makes the brush smaller. The right bracket would make it larger. Like so. Normally, you'll probably want to make sure you're using a brush that has a soft edge, but it's really up to you. Soft edge is usually good because it prevents the effect from having a really, really harsh edge. The harsh edges can be a really quick giveaway that there's a faked effect in there, that it's been adjusted. Whenever possible, you'll try to want to have subtle effects. I'm pressing and holding the space bar to allow me to pan around my screen. Whenever I press and hold the space bar on the keyboard, whatever tool I have active, in this case the dodge tool, toggles to become the hand, the grabber hand tool. And then it's very quick and easy to pan around. Now the advantage of this is that it's, well, it's a tool. And it's a brush and you can use it pretty much the same way you use any brush. So for a lot of people, it's extremely easy to work with. The weakness is that I am permanently changing these pixels. That's not bad. I'm going to press Command-0 for our PC users. That would be Control-0 to return to viewing the entire image. And if I turn off the dodge layer so you can see the original, you can see the change. So the advantage is that it is a brush. Therefore, it's really pretty easy to work with. The disadvantage is effectively that you are permanently changing the pixels of your image. So if you decide you didn't like this effect, your only real recourse is to start over from the original, which is why we save the original. Now, another alternative, I'm going to turn off the dodge layer. An alternative that gives you more flexibility, if you don't like the effect you can remove it, is to use an adjustment layer. I'm going to click on the original image because my adjustment layer will be placed right above whatever I have selected. And there's a really quick tool called the Smart Brush. The Smart Brush is an automatic adjustment. From the options bar at the top of the work area, I can choose the type of brush I want to use. And under all purpose, there's one here called Brighter that should work pretty well. And the Smart Brush makes a selection, and anything inside of the selection is affected by the brush. The Smart Brush combines a quick select on the area you want to affect with a layer mask. You'll notice that as I'm using the Smart Brush, 
the little thumbnail, the layer mask thumbnail here on the brighter one adjustment layer is being adjusted. So SmartBrush automatically added an adjustment layer with a layer mask. And as I select different areas, it's also automatically adjusting that layer mask. Now, if I hold down the Alt or Option key, that would be Alt if you're a Windows user and Option if you're a Mac user, I can remove areas from my selection. Because as what happens anytime you use the Smart Brush, sometimes you select areas you don't want. So normally the brush simply adds. But by holding down Alt or Option, I can remove from that selection. So I can use it to really quickly refine the area I want to work with. I covered using the Smart Brush in the lessons on working with selections, working with the selection tools. Effectively, that's what the Smart Brush is. It combines the Quick Select tool with an adjustment layer really quickly and easily. Now, I have the ability to refine the edge. I'm going to do that now. I'm going to knock down the smooth. I'm going to raise the feather probably to about eight per se and click OK. Feathering the edge makes a semi transparent edge. So instead of having a sharp adjustment where the image is being changed, it's a much softer adjustment. Usually, when you're performing color correction, you'll want a soft edge to separate the areas that you are correcting from the areas that you're not correcting. A harsh edge can look really, really fake. Now this adjustment is preset. I can double click on the little adjustment layer thumbnail to open the adjustments panel, or I can adjust the brightness even more. I'm gonna raise that a little bit. And as you can see, it completely changes. At the bottom of the adjustments layer, there are several buttons. I'm gonna click the Press to view the previous state. It's a third button from the left. It allows me to see the layer as it was before the adjustment I just made. So as you can see, this is much, much brighter. The selection edge, the marching ants, can actually be a little distracting. So you can hide that by pressing Command H for Mac users or Control H for Windows users. All it really does, that keyboard command, is hides the selection edge. The teeth are still selected. The marching ants, the edge, are simply hidden. You can also do this under View, Selection. This allows you to hide or show the selection edge. Keep in mind, if you turn this off, you'll probably only want to toggle it off temporarily. It can actually become really annoying if you can't see that selection edge, because you'll forget that it's there. Not bad. That's pretty good. And this is a completely non-destructive change. So the marching ants, the selection edge are only visible when I have the adjustment layer highlighted and I can readjust them. I can change the settings. And if I really don't like it, it's just like any other adjustment layer. I can delete it. I can hide it if I want to see the original. No problem. Now I'm going to return this to the original setting. Notice that my adjustment layer was placed above all the other layers. I'm going to drag it down so it's just above original. So now I can always have the dodge active if I want to. So I can turn off the layer if I want to see the original. I can compare it to dodge. Nice, quick, no problem. So the advantage of using the smart brush is that you aren't permanently changing your images. Remember, in Photoshop Elements, there's a lot of different ways to achieve the same effect. It's entirely up to you which one you like to use. I'm going to save this file. I'll save it as a Photoshop document, and I'm going to keep all the defaults enabled. And I'm just going to call it Brighter Teeth. 